Hi there, it's Tiffany from Daisy Farm Crafts and today I'm going to do a tutorial for you for our colorful triangle uh, baby blanket. So we're going to learn this technique about how to carry yarn through the rows so that you can switch off and easily um, make the triangles. So if you can see here, the yarn is being carried through the rows but I have a little bit of a, of a trick so that you can uh, cover up the yarn on the return pass. Then I'll show you how to do a ribbed border. I've done it on other blankets as well. I have just a little bit different way of doing the corner that I'm hoping is a little bit easy for you. Um, and I think that's it. This is just half double crochet. So let me show you the colors that I'm, I'm using. So it's made with Bernat Bundle Up and it's a 100% polyester. The recommended hook size is a 5.5 millimeter. That's an I lettered hook. And this color is duckling. The main color of the blanket is called marshmallow. And the other ones I added in, this one is called Red Wagon, but it's really like a coral color, corally pink. And this color was called Brook. So you'll need one of each one of the colors. And I ended up using three and part of a fourth. This is how much I had left over from the fourth one of the marshmallow. So you want four of this main color, whatever color you decide to use. So the pattern repeat for this blanket is any number times 10 plus three. So for this sample, I uh, have chained 23. Uh, for the blanket, it have measured approximately 36 inches by 34 inches. And for that size of blanket, I chained 113. So you can pretty much make this any size you would like. Okay, we are going to begin in the third chain from the hook. So one, two, three, with a half double crochet, but we're gonna just not quite finish that. I'm going to start with the coral color. You can start with whatever color you'd like. But before I finish that stitch, I'm going to pull through with the coral color. And now for the next nine stitches, I am going to work half double crochet into the chain. And I'm also working over the cream color. So I'm carrying this along with me. And we're gonna do that for nine stitches. Okay, on this ninth stitch, so we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, oh, I've only got eight. Here's eight, and here is nine. I'm going to choose to make sure, you've got to choose for one color to stay to the front of your work and one to the back, and I think I'll put the coral to the front right here. So before I pull through with the marshmallow color, the cream, I placed that coral forward, then pull through. Okay, now we only have to do one stitch. We're not going to pull through yet, because we just need one. Let's keep that to the back, and now pull right back up with coral. This is what we're making is the base of the triangles, the very first row of triangles. 
So let's make nine. Okay, so there was nine, one, two, three. Again, coral to the front. Oh, one other tip too is to make sure that you, you kind of give that a little tug to make sure it had laid flat al along the row. Let's pull through with the white. And we should have one stitch left and we will go ahead and make that stitch and chain two and turn. Okay, so if you were making the big blanket, you would, you would just obviously repeat this until you get to the end. It's nine of, the, of a color, one cream. Okay, now we're on to the second row. Bring this coral color around the side so that we can have it to use. And this first chain two that we did sort of counts as the first stitch. And so this it would be the second stitch in white that we're doing. But let's just make one pull through because we're going to now work on the in between the posts. So here's one post, here's the other. We're inserting our hook in between them. And you'll notice that that automatically makes us lean, you know, uh, lose a stitch if we only are working in between the coral ones. Not lose a stitch, but only, you know, there will only be eight spaces. This is how the natural how the triangle will form. So work across in the next eight spaces in between those half double crochets. So sometimes we've called it the wide half double crochet because we are not working into any of the loops. Okay, and here's the last space between these last two. So I have eight. This is number eight. And we're going to pull the coral forward. It's very important to do that so that your yarn doesn't get twisted on itself. I know lots of things to remember in this kind of a blanket. It's not for the faint of heart. Okay, so now your next stitch, we're going to do one on either side of that cream one because we're going to increase on the cream space. It's kind of like the upside down triangle. So here's one on this side and one on that side, but don't finish. Leave your cream to the back of your work. Pull up with the coral. Kind of adjust that tension there, adjust the stitch down, get it ready to be carried along. And we will be working eight. Okay, so there's my eighth one. Let's put the yarn to the front. Give the cream just a bit of tug. Make sure it was laying flat. Pull through. And now let's finish this row with two half double crochets. One into the next space. And then one into the space between the last stitch and that turning chain. So that's why that turning chain on the on the other side of the work sort of counts as your first kind of the two over here. Okay, so we've got eight and two. I think
think you can see where we're going here. So chain two and turn. Wrap the coral around the end so that we've got it to carry along with us. Now let's work. Technically, this is number one, the chain two. Now here's something that I, else that I want to teach you and help you to cover up the yarn that's being carried. Okay, I'll show you in just a second. As soon as we get a few more stitches in, you'll see it. So I just worked two. And now here we go. So as you're working along, you might be able to see this carried yarn, the cream, along that row. Now another option to make it a little bit more secure is to, as you're entering your hook in between the stitches, is to go ahead and place it underneath that carried yarn. And then that way, it tucks it right up against the bottom of the row. So I, I could have done it here. I just, I mean, you can go back and do it on th this color too. Since this is a sample, I just was waiting to show you on the little bit larger coral section. Okay, so our number for this row is seven and three. There's that seventh one. Color to the front. Pull this through. Now we'll have a chance to make those three. So it's up to you if you, whatever you decide to do, if you want to, this, this one sort of seemed to be tight for me. So I just ignored it. But whatever you decide to do, just keep it the same so it looks the same no matter what. On this one, I did go underneath. So there's the coral that you can see. I just pulled that up. Pulled that up. There's our three stitches. So you can really see on the back how I'm lifting that carried yarn that was in the previous row. So yes, I'm crocheting over this one too, but there is that yarn that was along the previous row. It's down in here. Here's our last one. Okay, that was seven. You can kind of always tell when you've got to the last because the next one is between a coral and a cream. So here we go, here's one. And so it'll be just a little bit different on one side. But that's simply because we're working in between posts. So don't worry about it. It will look okay. Okay, let's turn. Okay, here we go. This is row four. Same idea. One, two, Keep this back there. Now this time we're only going to be working six. So
and let's do the four in between. And back to six. One, two, three. Okay, so here we go on row number one, two, three, this four. This is row number five. So we've got three in the white that we've worked on this side. And now let's work one, two, three, four, five across. I'm Still working in between those posts, trying to grab the yarn that's under there to really hide that end. We're halfway through this triangle, I believe. This is the row where it's five and five. to the back. Put our color forward. And let's end this row with one, two, and I'm gonna go ahead and get underneath that coral, and three. Okay, so we're doing a good job here. So I was thinking on the earlier rows, I was confused like, oh wait, why isn't this number equaling this number? We don't want it to, because we're just doing a half of a triangle here on the on the side see how we're just we're just doing half of a triangle so we're good um but what we're working on right now is obviously a, a row where the tri half of the triangle is the cream color and then we'll be switching to a color so i was feeling a little confused but now i've i've got it figured out okay chain two and turn One, we're going to work three here, get up underneath that one carried, and now we're back and now it's the reverse, four in in the coral and six in the white. So I'll meet you at the end of the row here. I think we're 
you're getting it. Okay, so this is the end of row one, two, three, four, five, six, end of row six, and we'll finish with one, two, three, four, four stitches, there we go. One, two, always chain two and turn, always chaining two and turning. Give that a pull. Okay, row seven. Let's work the first four stitches. Now we're going to work three. We'll have three uh, in the color. And seven in the cream. Okay, let's finish this row with four, one, two, three, and four. We're almost done with this first set of triangles. Here we go, row eight. Start with four of these one, two, three, four. Pull through. Let's do two in the colors. There's one. See how that I can just get right underneath that and hide it. There's two. Now let's work eight across. And here's two in in coral, pull through, and let's finish this off. My guess is that we'll be doing one, two, three, four, five. Okay, oh gosh, this is our last little row. We're gonna do the point of the triangle here. Here we go. Let's start with five in this color, the cream. It's not cool how it's just built itself out though, just by doing one extra or one less of each color. So here's number five. And just one. And now we'll have nine. 
And it is good to always, you know, I would keep counting. <laughs> this is a, this is kind of a counting blanket, making sure you stay on top of it. It's not too bad. I mean, you do get into a little bit of a rhythm, but uh, you do need to make sure that you've got your right number of stitches. And here's five. And we can just pull through with the, oh no, wait, wait, wait. Yes, pull through with the cream. Because before we finish, all right, after this row, this is one thing you're gonna have to remember, is that after this row, we can cut off the color, weave that in later. You will do one complete row of cream. And this is where you really want to count again too to make sure you've got all the stitches correctly. Now I still can, you can still work underneath that coral color if you wanna tuck that up against the row. Um, so we're, we should have one, two, three, four, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, okay? before you reach to the point. And then what I would start doing is, let me see how I, if I remember. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That's where, so I would start counting and make sure I had 10 before I got to that next color. So here I just did five and then I go one, two, three, four, here's five. I'm gonna get rid of this that color. Yes, nine and 10. So, and, and then of course you'd be continuing across 10, 10, 10, just making sure the 10th one was, you know, you've got 10 stitches in between the triangles. And then it should finish off, let's see, with one, because it can be a little bit tricky. And this is where you could get your counting off really easily if you miss a stitch in here. five and six and we're good with that we want an extra one on that side because remember this little chain two sort of counts as six but it's always kind of off one number but it it turns out okay and that's simply because we're working in between stitches okay you got your first row of a colored triangle okay so what's different in this blanket is that these colors are offset so we'll pick we'll pick the gray next and like i said we're not stacking these triangles like in our other blankets we are going to go ahead and change the color so it's not not too much different other than we're using a different color oh i forgot to get the gray out did i mention that we used this gray i don't know if i did it the first it's called violet gray i think i might have forgot that Okay, so here's, let's go ahead and change color right there. And chain two. Make sure you bring the, the uh, cream marshmallow along with you. So here's one. two, three, we're gonna do five of these, four and five and 
hopefully if we've done it right, <laughs> your, and this is why it's important to do one whole row with cream is so that we're back to, we're, we're able to place the point of the uh, cream right at the point of the triangle below. So pull through with cream and here's stitch number six, technically number one in there, but that was five and let's leave that. Let's pull this through and now we are back to nine. So we want nine. One, two, three, four, seven, eight, nine, yay. And we did it. If it lands right there, we did our counting really well. We ended the row with five in the gray. Let's chain two and turn. Okay, so now we'll be decreasing in the color while increasing with the cream on this section. So here's four. And let's do two in the cream. Okay, we still finished this row with five stitches, but as you know, that's totally okay. <laughs> We're gonna be fine. So, let's turn. I kind of find that for those first couple rows, I don't need to worry about grabbing the yarn. But now, as it starts to show through, here's four. On this side and now we'll be doing three in this color and it will be seven across the middle anyway I think you probably are getting the hang of this so I will meet you back after we've got the triangle made and I'll show you how to do the border. 
So keep building those triangles. Okay, I am about to finish. And so we've got one, nine, one, nine. So I'm going to pull through with gray. This is just gonna be a little bit tricky on this last one. And that will be the last stitch, but I am gonna still pull through with the cream so that I can do one complete row of cream. So we'll keep it with the cream every at the at the final. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine rows of pattern. And the tenth row will be completely cream again. And that was the same as uh, is the row that we did here. That's what helps us stay on track. And again, the counting is poor. If anything, count this row to make sure that you've got all your stitches in here. There we go. Okay, so you know what to do. <laughs> Chain two, and you're off and running. You're gonna repeat what we did down here. You're gonna work one in white, nine in the next color, one in, right in that space, so it lines up with that uh, stitch right there. It will line up. That's what you do. You're gonna alternate these two rows until you have the height that you want. I just did four, I did a repeat of the four uh, colors and then I ended. But you could, you know, even though I started with the, the uh, coral color, red wagon, and then the gray, yellow, teal, I just ended red. I guess I technically could have done one more row of the uh, red, red wagon if I wanted it to be exactly the mirror image, whatever. But I just did four, three sections of the four colors. Okay, so now I'm gonna uh, get you going on the border. So say I'm finished. What I did is that after I was done, I went ahead, I did not turn. Oh, of course, I, I did take time to weave in the ends. I'll do that in a minute, but I went ahead and chained two. And this is gonna be my corner and I worked a single crochet. Now we're gonna do two rounds of single crochet. And the trickiest part about all of it is to make sure you get enough stitches in. So what I like to do, and enough to make it look really nice and even. So I would come down here and put two stitches every other row. So I know that that's the chain two and turn row, and I kind of liked covering up the spot where we you know, had to carry yarn around the side. So that's where I'm placing my hook. And I'm working the two single crochets. The beauty about using this burnout bundle up is that it's, it is really great and stretchy. Okay, so here's two and two. So maybe that will help you if I, two, four, six, eight, which makes sense. And that the ninth one was up here in the corner. You know, remember we do have 10 rows essentially. So if you can get 10 single crochets per each side of the triangle, you'll be doing good. That's another way to do it. Okay, so now here we are at the corner and this is what I'm doing in the corners is a single crochet chain two, single crochet. We're gonna 
do these corners a little bit differently. Okay, across the bottom, I really just did one single crochet at the bottom of each stitch. So there's one, two, you know, you're just working on the underside of that chain. Get to the corner, do that single crochet, chain two, single crochet, work your stitches up the side, and then go ahead and work all the way across and I'll meet you back when you get here. Oh, and this is another tip I wanted you to do, think about doing is to go ahead and place a stitch marker here. So you'll know that this is, this is our starting corner here. So if you've got something you can mark, mark this, mark that spot just so we know that's our starting corner because we're never going to join the rounds and we're never going to turn. We're going to just keep going around and around. Okay, so I've made it all the way around and I'm going to do one more round. So this is, if you remember, our little chain two, our single crochet, chain two, single crochet of this first corner. Just go ahead and work your single crochet, chain two, get yourself around that corner and then work one single crochet into the top of each single crochet and when you get to the corner down here in the chain two space work your corner stitch single crochet chain two single crochet and then finish all the way around and i'll meet you back like i said no joining no turning we're just going around Okay, so I'm back after this second round of single crochet. Just worked the last single crochet of the round. I'm looking at the chain two space. And instead of single crochet, what I'm going to do is a double crochet. Chain two and double crochet. Okay, okay, so now in each of these single crochets, we're going to work a round of double crochet. We're getting our, our base in so that the next round we can start working the ribbing stitch. So just work your double crochets. Into each stitch when you get to the corners in the chain two spaces double crochet, chain two, double crochet. And I'll meet you back around here and then I'll show you how to get the ribbing going. Okay, so I have one double crochet in every stitch around and I'm right back here to the very first double crochet we made of that corner. So I'm going to reach down, we're gonna pop it forward, just like that. Now we're going to work our corner, which is double crochet, chain two, double crochet. And since we popped that one forward, let's go ahead and pop this first, uh, next double crochet to the back. So we're doing an alternating rib stitch. So this is double crochet around the post. Sorry, this is a front post double crochet back post, which just means we're popping it towards the back. And we're going to alternate these. Front. And back. So keep alternating those all the way down to even get to this one. And then make sure in this corner you work double crochet, chain two, double crochet, and then continue the pattern right on this very next double crochet. Work all the way around and I'll meet you back when we complete this round. No turning, no joining. Okay, so how have you done? Hopefully that turned out well for you on this round, just continuing to alternate and you know get those corners in. So I'm back around to this very first corner and here's that very first post that we did. 
So now all you need to do is if the post is forward, keep it forward and do the opposite so of, of the corner one. So these are our regular double crochets that are make the corner. So since this was front post, I'm gonna go back post. And I'm still gonna work our corner here, which is double crochet, chain two, double crochet. And I'm just gonna look ahead. So there's front, back, so this one will be front. And this one will be back, back here, this next one. So that kind of is how you would increase around the corners. So I worked, you can make it that you can make this as many rounds as you want. I did about, I think I did three rounds of the post stitching. And then when I returned, I did um, one round of all single crochet again. So that is how this kind of worked out. So here's all my little, you know, you're gonna have this nice little mitered corner look. And then when I came back around, I just did one whole round of single crochet, still doing, let's see, did I do, I did single crochet one, I did single crochet, one chain, one single crochet for the corner. And then I just slip stitched and wove in all of those ends. So let's see, it looks like I did one, two, three, four, four rounds, maybe five rounds, five rounds of the ribbing. So it's up to you. I wanted it to make sure it looked really good. But anyway, I hope you noticed though, um, a lot of thing with the Burnett bundle up is, you know, and I did do a lot of adjusting and pulling and, um, when you're done with it, you can wash it and block it or if you want to, to stretch it into shape. Um, and those really, the more you, you know, you kind of stretch it, these just disappear into the rows, the carried yarn. So you could see a little bit where we're, we're changing colors, but after it's finished, you know, it, oops, it kind of just disappears in there and it, I think it does a really nice job. So there is a free written pattern on our website, on our website, daisyfarmcrafts.com. Look for the colorful triangles blanket. Uh, it will be underneath the tab. We have a menu heading of crochet blankets and then they are categorized. And this one is under shapes. And you can see all of the other triangle blankets that we've made. I'll also put some links down into the caption if you're only seeing this on YouTube. But uh, come and show us your triangle blanket in the Daisy Farm Crafter group on Facebook. Uh, lots of people there. We've got 74,000 people in that group now. And uh, it is so fun to see the different colors blankets are made in and, and share tips and tricks and, and all that good stuff. So have a wonderful day and thanks for stopping by.